and welcome to another episode of AT Tech. I'm your host today, Andrew T. On a previous episode of AT Tech, we were discussing smartphone and the platforms they're available on. Guys, I said AT Tech on the last episode of AT Tech. I'm not sure what the CG Tech is. This is a yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. If after the smartphone episode, you're still unsure what smartphones are and how they work, don't worry. This is a remedial class and I'm here to help. Wikipedia defines a smartphone as a mobile phone with an advanced mobile operating system. They typically combine the features of cell phones and those of other popular mobile devices such as a digital assistant, that's a PDA for most people that don't know, an MP3 player, media player, GPS, that's your navigation. Most smartphones have a touchscreen user interface and can run, run third-party applications. Now, those applications are what we're gonna discuss in this episode here, but let me continue on. And of course, all smartphones are camera phones. Smartphones from 2012 onward also have a high-speed broadband 4G LTE internet web browsing, which means you can browse the web at super fast speeds. Motion sensors does not only helps out for gaming, but a lot of other variables as well. A form of mobile payment. Even though phone is implied, the smart features of these devices is what turns your phone by 1960 standards, of course, into a supercomputer that mankind could only dream of. These devices have so much functionality, it's a shame not to take advantage of it. As I said before, I'm here to help, and it's time for your first fishing lesson. What we're gonna do, we're gonna branch AT Tech off into two different categories of shows. My discussion in smartphones is to make you more aware of what your smartphone is capable of and realizing what I'd have to relay onto you so that you fully understand what you can utilize your phone to do. I realize applications are a major, 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 major part of a smartphone. So I decided to dedicate entire episodes to applications. So every week when you get the normal weekly AT Tech video, you'll get a weekly app of the week video. As far as the regular show goes, on this episode today, I wanted to prep you for the app episode. Instead of doing a total 20 minute long video, I can give you a short video to give you a prep today. And when the app video comes out later on in the week, you guys will be ready for it. Today's prep video is gonna be on password managers. And the reason why we're starting with platform managers as our first official app for the apps of the week is because security is number one. In order to help with cybersecurity issues, we're gonna start our tutorials on how to care and what your smartphones are capable of. We're starting it today with password managers. Unless you've been hiding under the rock lately, you know online security is very important. You know you need strong passwords and you should change them regularly, but knowing this information doesn't make it any bit easier to do it. While passwords can be fairly secure, the weakness is how users choose to manage them. Right now, we're gonna go over poor password management techniques. Simple passwords are short in length that use words found in the dictionary or don't mix in different characters types. That means numbers, punctuations, upper, lowercase letters, or otherwise easily guessable passwords. Another poor management technique, password others can find on sticky notes, on a monitor, in a notebook, by the computer, and your documents on your computer, whiteboard reminders, smart device storage, etc. Another poor management technique, the same password. This is given using the same password for multiple accounts, never changing your password. Now, 
before I got my password manager, one of my biggest pet peeves were changing my password and making multiple passwords. Coming up with a nice creative password that nobody can guess is not an easy task, especially something that's rememberable by me and at the same time, very secure. To come up with that combination is not easy. And then when you have to change your password all over again, it's just a horrible experience. I know that firsthand. Today, what I'm trying to teach you guys is how to help secure yourselves online because these practices are needed very much to keep the safety of your accounts. However, I know it's very tedious to do so. So today we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how it's done easily. Shared passwords, another poor password management. User telling other people have other people your password, sending unencrypted email with your password information, contractors using the same password for all their accounts, etc. Administrative account logins where limited logins would suffice. Administrators who allow other users with the same role to use the same password. All of these practices make it very easy for hackers, crackers, malware, and cyber thieves to break into individual accounts. Corporations of all size, government agencies, institutions, schools, police stations, anything that has internet access. It's protecting against these vulnerabilities that make password managers a necessity. So we not only need great passwords, but we need to change them regularly. Let's take a look at some of the flavors the password manager app comes in. Password managers come in five often combined flavors. All right, so you have your desktop password managers, which are desktop or laptop software storing your passwords onto your computer's hard drive. Portable, portable software storing passwords and programs on a mobile device, such as a PDA, smartphone, or as a portable op application on a USB flash drive. Token, credentials are protected using a security token, thus, typically offering multi-factor authentication by combining something the user has, a smart card, a USB stick, something the user knows, your pen or password, and or something the user is, which is your biometrics, fingerprint, retinas. Another flavor of password managers are web-based online password managers where passwords are viewed and copied from a provider's website, which personally speaking, I dislike those password managers. I don't want to leave my key online where if somebody is good enough, they can hack through whatever barriers I put up around it. I don't like that. I don't like the idea of leaving all those passwords online so that somebody can get to them at some point. I'd rather keep them on a device somewhere and risk the device getting hacked into versus storing them online. I love cloud-based software. I have Dropbox, Google Drive, and I use a lot of cloud-based software where all the interfaces are managed online. I like those programs and I trust them. However, I don't trust them enough not to have a backup on my personal hard disk. Just in case something happens, the website can go down, something can happen to the server, something can happen to anything in between me and them. And I don't want me not to have access to my information. So when it comes to web-based anything, I'm very particular about that. Now, there are other people out there who feel differently and you're more than welcome to. This is why I'm informing you of what exists. Now we got cloud-based online password managers where credentials are stored on a service provider server on the internet, but handled by password management software running on the client's machine. And last but not least, stateless. Passwords are generated on the fly from a master passphrase and a tag key, and a tag using a key derivation function. Password managers can protect against keyloggers or keystroke logging 
malware. When using a multi-factor authentication password manager, that fills in login field. The user does not have to type any usernames or passwords. While a keylogger may pick up the pen to authenticate into the smart card token, for example, without the smart card itself, something the user has, the pen does the user no good. However, password managers cannot protect against man in the middle browser attacks where malware on the user device performs operation and go on a bank website. While the user is logged in while hiding the malicious activity from the user. Now that you know what password managers are and you have a better idea of how they work and why you need it, we can start to break down the password managers themselves. That's pretty much it for this episode. As I said already, this episode was to prepare you for our next at review episode. I noticed what most people tend to do app of the week shows, they typically pick an app and then just go into it and tell them why they like it. And more or less, they give their opinion of why they like it and suggest for you to get it. Here at AT Tech, we understand that everybody's different and we want everybody to be happy with the choices they make. Just like there are different smartphone platforms, there are different applications with great interfaces that may vary to users, but some of them may be similar in functionality. And when it comes to similar functionality, typically the interface that you like better is gonna be the one that you go with. And that's what makes applications within the world of smartphones so interesting. But as I said, what we're gonna do in every episode of AT Tech App Reviews, we're gonna choose a topic matter of applications. And then we're gonna run through those applications until we present you with the best choices of application to choose from. Thank you for watching AT Tech. Stay tuned for more episodes. It's a nice day out today. As you can see, Thank you for viewing AT Tech, people. I know I got a big head. I like to keep the camera back because my head is huge. Thank you guys for viewing AT Tech. I appreciate everybody, every single viewer, everyone. If you have any questions, if you just wanted to say hi, feel free to leave anything and everything in the comment box below.